And remember, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They, the angels, said, Will you place therein those who will make mischief therein and shed blood while we glorify you with praises and thanks and sanctify you? Allah said, I know that which you do not know. Allah shaped Adam into a human being, but he remained a figure of clay for 40 years. The angels went past him. They were seized with fear by what they saw. And Iblis felt fear the most. It didn't look too impressive to him. It was made of clay, dark. He tapped it and kicked it and it made a ringing sound. And he was able to flow through it. He found that Adam was hollow, so he thought it was a weak creature. But at the same time, he's trying to beat his fear saying, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. I'm created from fire and you're created from clay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew the soul into Adam. Allah permitted them in paradise to approach and enjoy everything except one tree. Allah commanded them not to even approach or go near that particular tree. But do not come near this tree or you both will be of the wrongdoers. Iblis will come to Adam. O oh Adam, why don't you eat from this tree? Adam will say, A'udhu Billah. I seek refuge from Allah. Go away. So Iblis realized that it's very hard to deceive Adam. So what did he do? He went to Hawa. So begins the story of Adam, the first man, the first human being. Allah the Exalted informed the angels that he was going to create a vicegerent on the earth who will have children and grandchildren. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They had corrupted the earth and caused much bloodshed. They're afraid. They're saying, will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood while we declare your praise and sanctify you? Allah said, indeed I know that which you do not know. Allah created Adam from a handful of soil containing portions from all its varieties on earth. Angels were sent to earth to collect the soil that was to become Adam. It was red, white, brown, and black. It was soft and malleable, hard and gritty. It came from the mountains and the valleys, from fertile deserts and lush fertile plains, and all the natural varieties in between. The descendants of Adam were destined to be as diverse as the handful of soil from which their ancestor was created, all having different appearances, attributes, and qualities. So you have some that are righteous and some that are evil. Some are easy to deal with and some of them are tough. Soil taken from the earth is referred to as soil. Allah also refers to it as clay. When it is mixed with water, it becomes mud. When it is left to stand, the water content reduces and it becomes sticky clay or mud. If it is again left for some time, it begins to smell and the color becomes darker, black, smooth clay. It was from this substance that Allah molded the form of Adam. His soulless body was left to dry and it became what is known in the Quran as sounding clay. Adam was molded from something akin to potter's clay. When it is wrapped, it produces a ringing sound. According to Ibn Kathir, Allah shaped Adam peace be upon him into a human being, but he remained a figure of clay for 40 years. The angels went past him. They were seized with fear by what they saw, and Iblis felt fear most. He used to pass by the figure of Adam, buffeting it, which would make a sound like pottery. He would say, you have been created for a great purpose. As time went, Allah left the body of Adam and every time Iblis looked at it, he felt fear of it. But at the same time, 
He's trying to beat his fear, saying, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. And now it turned into proudness, arrogance. And then he said, if I'm given influence over you, I will guide you astray. And if you are given influence over me, I will disobey you. Iblis is our enemy from day one. Adam is not even alive yet. It's just a body that is lying there. And Iblis says, if you're given influence over me, I am going to disobey you. When the time drew near to breathe the soul into Adam, Ibn Kathir mentioned, Allah breathed into Adam. The soul started from the top of the head and reached down to the legs. When it reached his eyes, he could see the angels prostrating before him except Iblis. When the soul reached his nose, Adam sneezed. Adam said, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah. Allah responded back to him, Yarhamukallah, your Lord has granted you mercy. This was the first conversation among Allah and humankind. When it reached his abdomen, Adam felt an appetite for food. He jumped hurriedly to eat the fruits of paradise before the spirit could reach his legs. So he failed to do so. Many scholars argued that Allah said the below. As a consequence of this incident, man is created of haste. And when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, so they prostrated, except for Iblis. He refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questioned Iblis to mention the reason behind his refusal. And Iblis tried to compare himself to Adam, peace be upon him, and establish his own superiority over Adam mentioning, I am better than Adam. You have created me from fire and created him from clay. He believed that he was better in creation and more honorable than Adam. Therefore, he abstained from prostrating even though Allah had commanded him to do so, just as he commanded the angels. Actually, a nasty kind of arrogance was developed inside of Iblis. Due to the denial, Iblis was expelled from paradise. Allah said, Descend from paradise, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein, so get out. Indeed, you are of the disgraced one. Iblis said, Do you see this one whom you have honored above me? If you delay me until the day of resurrection, I will surely destroy his descendants, except for a few. Allah said, So indeed you are of those reprieved. So Iblis argued that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had misled him. Instead of acknowledging his own fault, he blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this incident and promised to mislead the human being using various attractions of this earth. He swore that he will misguide the human beings and lead them to Jahannam with him. Iblis said, My Lord, because you have put me in error, I will surely make disobedience attractive to them on earth and I will mislead them all. Shaitan will entice the human beings in such a manner that disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks attractive to them and he will attack from before, behind, left and right. Shaitan influences most of us in a way that we fail to adequately thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis said, because you have put me in error, I will surely sit and wait for them on your straight path. Then I will come to them from before them and from behind them and on their right and on their left and you will not find most of them grateful to you. Allah taught Adam all the names of everything. Then he showed them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. They the angels said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Verily it is you, the all-knower the all-wise. He, Allah said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you have been hiding. 
So the angels realized that Adam, peace be upon him, was the creature who knew what they did not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rubbed the back of Adam alayhi salam and brought forth his progenies and asked, Am I not your Lord? The souls of every single human being that has ever existed, including us and all of the souls yet to come in this earth, were present at the time and made the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, indeed, you are our Lord. Although we have forgotten this whole incident, but we have a thing ingrained inside us, which is called as fitrah, that knows and auto-verifies that Allah is our Lord. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet wasallam said, when Allah created Adam, he wiped his back and every person that he created among his offspring until the day of resurrection fell off his back. He placed a ray of light between the eyes of every person then he showed them to Adam, and he said, O oh Allah, who are these people? Allah said, These are your offspring. He, Adam, saw one of them, whose ray between his eyes amazed him. So he said, O oh Lord, who is this? Allah said, This is a man from the latter nation of your offspring, called Dawood. Adam said, O oh Allah, how long did you make his lifespan? Allah said, 60 years. Adam said, O oh Allah, add 40 years from my life to his. So it was prescribed and sealed. That's it. According to Ibn Kathir, Allah raised their father Adam, and he looked at them and saw among them who were rich and those who were poor, and those who had good forms and those who did not. Adam, peace be upon him, said, O oh Allah, I wish you to make your servants equal. Allah replied, I love being thanked. Adam, peace be upon him, saw among the prophets like lamps among his progeny. Ibn Kathir mentioned, Adam, peace be upon him, was in paradise, felt lonely, and did not have a partner from whom he could get tranquility. One day he slept, and when he awoke, he found near his head a woman gazing at his face with beautiful tender eyes. Adam salam asked her, Who are you? She replied, A woman. He asked, Why have you been created? She said, So that you could find tranquility in me. The angels asked Adam, Peace be upon him, her name, and he replied, Hawa. They asked, Why did you call her Hawa? Adam said, because she was created of me, and I am a living being. And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise, and eat therefrom in ease and abundance, from wherever you will. And there they live the dream of all human beings. Allah permitted them to approach and enjoy everything except one tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them even not to approach or go near that particular tree. But do not come near this tree, or you both will be of the wrongdoers. Adam and Hawa knew that they were forbidden to eat the fruit of that tree. Adam, peace be upon him, was however a human being, and mankind lacked sufficient control over their minds and desires. Mankind also has the tendency to forget. The feelings inside the hearts change, and perseverance and willpower go up and down. Iblis summoned all the envy within him and took advantage of Adam's humanity to exploit him. He started to whisper to him day after day, Shall I guide you to the tree of immortality and the eternal kingdom? He also said, The reason Allah actually forbade you from eating from this tree is because eating from it will make you immortal like the angels. Iblis further gave reliance to them, mentioning, that he is a well-wisher or trusted advisor to them. Adam, peace be upon him, asked himself, What will happen if I eat from this tree? It might truly be the tree of immortality. His dream was to live forever in the pure sanctity of paradise. Iblis took a long period of time to be able to convince them, and at last, 
they decided to eat its fruit. They forgot that Allah had warned them about Iblis and mentioned them that he was their sworn enemy. Adam السلام, might have also forgotten the fact that he took an oath not to eat from the tree. Indeed, we made a covenant with Adam before, but he forgot, and we found on his part no firm will power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, so he, Satan, misled them with deception. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, thus did they disobey his Lord, so he went astray. After eating from the tree, Adam, peace be upon him, discovered himself and his wife to be unclothed. So they both started to cover themselves with the leaves of the trees of the surrounding. Allah the Almighty revealed these matters to us. O children of Adam, let not Satan tempt you as he removed your parents from paradise, stripping them of their clothing to show them their private parts. Indeed, he sees you, he and his tribe, from where you do not see them. Indeed, we have made the devils allies to those who do not believe. Allah the Almighty addressed Adam, Did I not forbid you to eat from that tree and warned that Satan is an enemy to you? They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you do not forgive us, we shall certainly be among the losers. Then Allah said, Get down to earth and live there for a certain period of time till you die, and from there you will be resurrected. On earth will be a dwelling place for you and an enjoyment for a time. Therein you shall live, and therein you shall die, and from it you shall be brought out resurrected. Adam, peace be upon him, and Hawa regretted and sought forgiveness from Allah. Allah accepted the repentance because it was sincere. Allah said, Get you down upon the earth, both of you, together from paradise. Some of you are an enemy to some others. Then if there comes to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into distress and misery. But whosoever turns away from my reminder, verily, for him is a life of hardship, and we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. It was said that Adam السلام, he was sent down in the regions of Sri Lanka and Hawa near Makkah. So they began their search for one another. They found each other on the mountain of Arafah. And there, my dear brothers and sisters, they renewed their life here on earth. Adam, peace be upon him, knew he left the peace of paradise. On earth, he had to struggle a lot in order to sustain himself. He had to cultivate and construct and populate the earth. He had to protect himself with clothes and weapons and protect his wife and children from the wild beasts. Above all, he had to struggle against his own nafs, the shaitan who has caused him to be expelled from paradise. That very shaitan continued to put effort to cause him and his children to be thrown into the eternal hellfire. The battle between good and evil is continuous. But those who follow Allah's guidance, they should fear nothing. While those who disobey Allah and follow Iblis will be destroyed along with him. Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger وسلم, said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, Your sin expelled you from paradise. Adam said, You are Moses, whom Allah selected as his messenger, and as the one to whom he spoke directly. Yet you blame me for a thing which had already been written in my fate before my creation? Allah's Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said twice. So Adam overcame Moses with his argument. The pinnacle of earthly bliss was reached when Adam and Hawa witnessed the birth of their first children, a set of twins. Adam was a devoted father and Hawa a contented mother. The twins were Qabil and his sister. Later, Hawa gave birth to a second set of twins, Habil 
and his sister. The family enjoyed the bounties and fruits of the earth provided by their lord. The children grew up to be strong and healthy young adults. Qabil tilled the land, while Habil raised cattle. But something was about to go terribly wrong. <laughs>